episode of Just Cooking. I'm your host, the Sam Al Alawi, aka Be the Maker on Instagram of Darcin Cafe at the Bahrain National Museum. Today, as usual, and as always, I am so happy to welcome Layal of Layal Bakes on Instagram. That's her handle, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing? Thank I'm you doing coming. good. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm super <laughs> excited. I'm, I've already been a fan by association. Right. Right. And right. I've heard a lot about your breads. Uh -huh. Right. So before we get into all of this magical items, I think I had a grammatical error there, but it's okay. It's been a long day. No big deal. No big deal. No big deal. Right. So your specialty, or in terms of the bread that you like to make, are what? So I make sourdough bread. Um, Beautiful. I don't know if everyone knows what sourdough is. Please tell them, <laughs> for those who don't. Okay, so sourdough is mainly flour and water mixed together. Right. That's it. Um, so flour already has some yeasts and bacteria in it, and when you add water into it, it activates the bacteria. Beautiful. And if you let it ferment in a couple of days, you're going to have that sourdough starter. That's it. You don't add instant yeast to it. You don't add active dry yeast to it. It's just flour and water. You let nature take its course. You let nature take its course. It knows what it's doing. Right. I mean, is that what we're doing today, though? Today, we're going to use instant yeast. We're not going to use sourdough starter. Okay. And the main reason is because not everyone has a sourdough starter, which I recommend. If you haven't tried it, I recommend you try it, especially if you're interested in making bread. Exactly. Because um, it's just the best thing in the world. I know. I, know. I love how you're whispering, but we all know <laughs> the is. secret's out, right? <laughs> right. And basically, you, you call the sourdough bread you make, it, it is a type of country loaf. Uh huh. Right? Yes. What does that mean in terms of the texture, the look of the bread? Right. So imagine you're in the French countryside. Yeah, I, oh, that's easy. Right? And it's it's a crusty, like gorgeous colored, like it needs to be, it needs to be dark. Like yeah. I don't like those pale loaves. Those are not my business. They're very processed looking. Yes. Yeah. No, it needs to be crusty. You need to have that Maillard reaction, the, the brown crust. Caramelly. Caramelly for sure. That's, that's what I'm looking for. There you go. And um, on the inside, it's soft and airy and it's pillowy. extremely pillowy, pillowy for yeah. sure. That's that's what I'm yeah, looking yeah, for. Yeah, exactly. We're all about the pillowy bread. <laughs> right. So it's crusty on the outside, soft on the inside, and it just has the best flavor. Like when you eat it, you salivate. And I feel like I truly mean this because once I started making sourdough right. bread, um, I realized that the bread we're having. I mean, salivating isn't that important, but, <laughs> but I mean, it just means that it's delicious. And then I had like supermarket bread and realized that oh. Like you went from here to there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, supermarket bread is convenient, but if you want like superior flavor, texture, and you, you mentioned this to me off screen. Right. But it's, uh, the thing you like about sourdough bread is you feel like there's respect there. There's respect for the ingredients, mm -hmm. there's respect for the process. Tell me a bit about that. Right. It's because it just, it takes so much longer to make than your regular bread. Um, it takes around two days to make um, wow. and you have to be feeding your starter constantly. So this sourdough starter that I spoke about in the beginning, it's flour and water, but it's, it, you make it, but you don't just let it sit there. You need to be constantly feeding it. And when I say feed it, you need to be constantly adding flour and water into it um, every day, sometimes twice a day. So Not it's so pretty, relax. yeah, it's Not pretty so temperamental. Relax. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty temperamental. It's like a baby. Um, it can be the absolute worst, but it's also the <laughs> absolute best um, if you do it right. And if you feed it well, right. um, it just gives you the best bread, the best flavor profile. What I like about that is all the effort you put in is kind of returned back tenfold. For sure, for sure. And it I'm, takes so long, but it's the like, you, the effort you put into it is absolutely worth it. And that's what you get back. Yes. Today, however, you've chosen something very simple and accessible for Ramadan, you guys. Mm -hmm. And this is really perfect because this is like a vehicle, I'm making up a word right now, for <laughs> dippage. Right? Absolutely. Right? I love that. All right. I dig that. Can you tell me about the ingredients you have for us today? Right. Okay. So. We have, I'm just going to read it off of here because I kind of forgot what they are. And that's okay. So we have 325 grams of bread flour. Okay. I've actually used pizza flour mm -hmm. and so it doesn't contain pepperoni or cheese. It's just cheaper bread flour. So I recommend you get that instead of all-purpose flour when you're making bread. Perfect. Um, so it's 325 grams of bread flour, which is actually pizza flour, and then 225 grams of whole wheat flour, okay. which is this right one. here. Right here. Right. Here, prepare yes, it. and then we have um, 200 grams of milk, as well as this is the milk, and 50 grams of water. 
Um, then we have some dates that are blended with water, so it's 200. And you made this, you yes. brought it in basically. Yes, so I, I made it beforehand just to save us, you know, some time and effort. Why not? Why not? <laughs> so it's 250 grams of dates mixed with 190 grams of water. Um, the water needs to be boiling to soften the dates. Nice. And then you blend it. That's any, it. Any particular type of date? No particular. I think just just what you can find in the supermarket, but make sure it's the soft kind of dates that are right. kind of pre-packaged and have the molasses. Sukkari would be perfect. Sukkari would be absolutely perfect, but okay. you know those compacted dates are, are also perfect. All that molasses goodness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Right. And, and these here are technically some toppings other than the yeast, right? Right, yes. So the yeast will go in the bread as right. well as the butter and the date molasses. And then we have some toppings um, that are sesame seeds, nigella seeds, which are black seeds, and fennel seeds, which are absolutely delicious with date bread. And, and you kind of, you're going to do like a selection. So a bit of everything so people right. can get... Right. By people, we mean us and the crew. <laughs> right. So how do you start this, basically? Okay, so the first thing you're going to do mm -hmm. is what I've already done, is you're going to soak the dates and then blend them in the food processor. So you're going to have kind of like a date paste, date jam. Right. Um, you could also just buy date paste from the supermarket. But I mean, making it yourself gives it more respect, the it process does. of it. It does. So what we're going to do now is we're going to toast the whole wheat flour in a pan on medium heat. I'm not going to say medium high because it burns really easily. It really does. It's almost flammable flour, by yes. the way. Yeah. Yes. So we're just kind of, we're going to toast it in the pan and kind of wait for the smell. Like it, once you start smelling, once it starts smelling nutty, right. that's when it's it's done. Like it doesn't need to be black, brown, anything. Um, all right. Speaking of which, let me turn on our... Yes. Uh, slightly complicated <laughs> oven, I mean induction top burner thingy. Right. All right, so I've turned it up. This is about a medium, uh -huh. right? Uh, and you kind of, you're going to put the flour in the pan? Right. All right, so I'm going to do that for you. Thank you. There you go. And this is whole wheat flour. Mm -hmm. Do you tend to work with a lot of different types of flours? Right, yes. Or so grains, more likely. Yeah, so in the beginning, I would just use bread flour because I was just intimidated by everything. You, you feel overwhelmed when you first yeah. start making bread and go on Instagram. So you basically tip the flour that you've been kind of toasting, the whole wheat flour, into this bowl. What are you going to do now? Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the uh, bread flour uh -huh. into the whole wheat flour. Okay. Just remember that this part is hot, so we're just going to transfer it back just here. Yeah, keep going back, keep going back. <laughs> All right, so we're going to add the bread flour. After we add the bread flour, we're going to add the yeast, which is two grams of instant yeast. Perfect. I prefer using instant yeast. Um, I feel like Active Dry has a bit of a yeasty smell sometimes. It does. It yeah. really does. So if you if you don't like that, it's go for this. Yeah, go for this for sure. And we just kind of mix it together, get them like get the ingredients to know each other, um, get them to become friends. You know. We love this phrase. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you waited for the flour to cool, right, before you added the yeast. Yeah. Why? Right. Um, because too much heat is going to kill the yeast. So it is a living being, it's just sleeping. Yes, it's just sleeping. Yeah. When you add the water, it comes back to life. There you go. So now that we've mixed the water and, uh, oh, not the water. <laughs> well, the water is going to go in though. <laughs> now that we've mixed the flour as well as the yeast together, we're going to add the milk, the water, as well as the blended dates. All right, so I'm going to hand you the milk. And using freshly sanitized hands, ladies and gentlemen. Very important. I mean, making bread with gloves is a pain. Right. You do need to use your hands, honestly, so you can get a feel for the dough. Right? Absolutely. And I think the whole pleasure of making bread is in using your hands. I mean, just when my hands touch that dough, uh, just that flour and the water together and mix the dough, it's the best feeling. It really is. It really is. It's therapeutic almost. Uh, which gets me into... And squidgy. Yeah, and squidgy, right. <laughs> and it's going to stick to your hands, but no big deal. No big deal. I mean, in the beginning, I would say, oh my God, it's sticking to my hands. And that usually freaks people out. They think it's not working. Right. right. Be it's, patient. Give it time. It's absolutely fine if it sticks to your hands. You know, just, just remove it from your hands. No big deal, really. And as you kind of form gluten in normal bread, I mean, that stuff kind of, it, it kind of attaches to that stuff stuck on your finger and pulls it back into the Right, dough. right. Right. So, okay, I, I started blending the bread. So what you're going to do is kind of do this motion with your hands because it just helps that it doesn't get in between your fingers. It happens every day in style. Yes, absolutely. There you go. And then you just mix everything together. And 
what are you going to do, like where do you want this in terms of texture as you're mixing it or after you're done mixing it? Like what do you want it to look like? Is it going to look clumpy? Is it going to look like fluid? It's going to be smooth. It shouldn't look clumpy. There shouldn't be any dry bits. Okay. So basically what we're doing now, this step is called auto lease okay. and it's just a fancy word of saying that the flour is going to hydrate. That's okay. it. So okay. the flour is just going to hydrate. Yeah. And basically hydrating flour takes a bit of time mm -hmm. for the, uh, all those proteins to activate and for it to absorb the liquid. Right. So what are you going to do after you're done mixing with this mixture usually? So after I'm done mixing, I'm supposed to let it rest for around two hours. Right. One or two hours. I mean, one hour is absolutely fine, but not less. It needs it needs time. It needs to come time together, to hydrate. To reform. Right. And, get and structure. And some of that gluten is actually going to form as you're letting it rest. So this time is essential Perfect. in making bread. That is key, ladies and gentlemen. And I yes. mean, have you made this bread before? Do you like making this bread generally? And do you think it's going to be like a perfect fit for the salmon? I think it's going to be absolutely delicious, especially if you pair it with like, like a hot, hearty soup. Um, I just love the flavors of sweet and, and salty. Like your soup doesn't need to be salty, but you know what I mean? That sweet and savory flavor. We've is been doing that all these episodes. So and, uh, good. It's so good. It's truly the best. So we're back. What are we gonna do now? All right, so your dough should be fully rested an hour, two hours, and then what you're gonna do is you're kind of going to knead the dough. Right. Now, because I just made this dough, so it hasn't had really a lot of time for it to rest, right. I'm going to put some flour, just a little bit of flour, um, at the surface that I'm gonna knead, but before right. that, um, I'm going to add um, some of the butter, as okay. well as the salt and the, um, so you got some melted butter here. Yes. Can I have just a different bowl to mix everything in, actually? Sure. So you're going to mix the butter. Yes. The salt. Yes. And? And the date molasses. Perfect. So what I'm doing here is, the reason I'm just mixing everything here together in a bowl before it goes in the bread, because I just want, I want the ingredients to get to know each other, just like I said earlier. You want to kind of homogenize them so that it's all one right, mixture. Right, right. So that... When you add it in, all the bits of the dough get some of these ingredients. Get some of the salt, get some of the date molasses, and some of the butter, it's which like are all delicious. You have an evenly distributed flavor throughout the whole thing, basically. Yes, yes. And it gets kind of difficult, especially if your dough has rested, and then you're, you come to add salt, um, it's gonna be hard. So once you mix these ingredients, it kind of makes a, your life a little bit easier. So I mean, this it's looking it. almost like honey at this point. No? Actually, it smells. Whenever I make this this bread and smell this bit, I'm just like, I want to eat it with a spoon. So good. Not good for you, but you can do it if you want. I mean, not everything has to be good for you, does no, it? No, but it's kind of salty. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> I mean, if you love salt, um, go for it. Why not? And this is pink salt. I mean, and there's no like we use pink salt today, but you can use like normal any kind of salt. Like, yeah. Okay. No big deal. Um, Pink salt is great. I think you told me that it's less salty. Yeah. Um, I usually use sea salt because I just I just love sea salt. I don't buy supermarket salt. No. I don't know what it's called. I just call it supermarket I salt. I have salt and I hate it. I mean, we, I prefer kosher salt. We've been using kosher salt. Mm -hmm. That lack of iodine. Yeah. It doesn't taste metallic. Right. If right. you have that salt at home, please toss it out. Yeah. And buy better. You know, salt. <laughs> All right? Salt is delicious. So it deserves, you know, you need to have good salt. If you learned anything from this episode, respect your ingredients. Respect your ingredients. I love no. that. Absolutely. So what I'm doing now is I'm kind of spreading um, the mixture on the dough and then I'm kind of just going to mix it. And it's going to be kind of like a pinching motion. So I'm kind of like pinching the dough. And so because it has salt in it, it's going to be a bit coarse. So you kind of need to be, you need to be tough with the dough. Don't be gentle here. You don't need to be gentle here. I mean, already you can tell it's not as sticky. Right. I mean, usually it has to rest, like you said, for two hours. Absolutely. But I mean, it, the gluten has relaxed. You can kind of work You're it. You're right, yeah. actually. Um, and that's the importance of kind of using your hands when you're making bread. Because if you were using a spatula or if you're using even gloves, you wouldn't really get to feel how the dough is. Yeah. And actually, just by feel right now, I can tell that it's rested maybe, I don't know, it hasn't rested much. No. Um, but it's so much, it feels so much better. And I think that's the case, not even with, um, not just with bread, I think with cookies as well. Yeah. You let them rest. 
Yes, and I think uh, because uh, Lael Bakes, that's her Instagram handle, by the way, I'm all about the shameless plugging. <laughs> because, I love it. <laughs> because she's awesome, she's basically prepared a rested all of this version, which she's gonna pull up as soon as you know we're done with this bit. Right. She's gonna wash your hands and get it, get to it, basically. Right. And at this point, you're basically gonna shape everything, right? Mm -hmm. right. So I'm just gonna quickly show you how to knead your dough. Um, this is important because this is all about technique. Right, yeah. right. It's all about technique, but also don't be intimidated. You can just kind of play with it. But you're kind of, you plop it onto the surface and you kind of, this is how you knead. <laughs> um, you use your hand to kind of just kind do of this. The palm, the yeah. soft part of your palm. Right, and you kind of just do this. And then don't be, don't be scared to kind of move the dough around. And some people, you know, are intimidated by the fact that it starts sticking everywhere. They should just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. No big deal. If it sticks, wash your hands. No big deal. There's another kind of kneading, which might be intimidating, but it's kind of fun, actually. It's a slap and fold method, which you do. We love the slap and fold <laughs> method. <laughs> so you kind of slap it onto the surface, and then you kind of pull it Get and put it back onto out. itself. Get all that anger For sure. That's why I say baking is like therapy. Uh, you get that anger out. You get that whatever you got going out. <laughs> and it's relatively cheaper than going to the therapist. Oh, for sure. <laughs> all right. And you get to eat at the end. I absolutely. Mean, it's like the perfect combo. Which makes it worth it. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll pretend that this dough has kneaded properly, but you don't really need to knead this dough for a long time. I think just a minute, two minutes, just so the ingredients kind of mix together. Right. That's enough. You don't need to kind of knead it for 10 minutes longer, even put it in the mixer. This is a fairly simple recipe, so all you need is a bowl, your hands, and a spoon. That's it. And I mean, once you bring the already rested prepared dough, they're gonna see what it looks like. Absolutely. So please stay tuned for the next part of this. You do not wanna miss it, because after you shape them, they're gonna go into the oven, and gonna be delicious. For sure. See you in a bit. So basically, you took out all that beautiful dough that you had rested for about two hours. Yes. You, you kind of put it on the on the board here with a tiny bit of flour so that it stops sticking. Uh -huh. And you've segmented the dough into right. six pieces because you want six pieces of flatbread, mm -hmm. right? And then you technically, I'm just going to do this so you can tell me if I did this right. Right. right? So Go I'm just going to fold the bread on top of itself, mm -hmm. like so, until it's like a nice bold shape, right? Yes. And now, I probably need you to show this to me again. All right. Because you did this like trick with your yes. fingers, right? So what do I yes. do now? So you're going to use your pinky fingers and you're kind of going to pull the dough towards you. Right. So it goes like so. You want to make sure that there's not a lot of flour on the table you. for this. Um, just because the flour is not going to help it to to, to get to where you want it to be. Right. Uh, so basically, you're gonna use your pinkies to kind of pull the dough towards you in a circular motion, um, like so. And this is kind of sealing that seam at the end so that right. it doesn't open up and you right. have that nice uniform shape. Absolutely. And you've already kind of done these for all of these. Yes, right. so these are these are, these are are good to go. Okay. All we have to do is kind of flatten them out right now. All right. So now that we've made them into these bun-like shapes. Okay. Uh, we're gonna take one of the doughs. Um, Bassam, you can even try it out. Right. Um, we're just kind of gonna flatten it out with our fingers, kind right. of like a pulling motion. So this is the motion that you're going for. So you're pulling from the center outwards. Yes. And kind of rotating it so you get an even kind of thickness all around. Yes, which is very important. Like the most important thing is that it needs to be even so that it bakes um, at just it all bakes evenly at one right. point and you want it to be circular but if it's not completely circular there's no big deal it's so easy to do though like. yeah it's because the dough is just perfectly fermented right now it's it's hydrated it's it's just ready to be in the oven it's, it's like fruity. yes it's fruity it's asking to be baked it really is <laughs> and then dipped because dip it. <laughs> I'm, yes. bringing, I'm trying to trademark dip it you guys it's not working i'm loving it i'm loving it all right so, all right what do you so, think of that this is perfect, actually. It's good to go. Okay. Um, so what you're, we're going to do is we're going to put it on a pan. And then once you put it on the pan, and the, it's kind of like going to shrink. Mm -hmm. That's OK. Um, just kind of. Uh, do you rest it? Um, it's going to rest for around. So actually, you're going to preheat the oven to 220 Celsius, degrees Celsius, 220, 230 degrees Celsius. And while the oven is preheating, this is going to rest. So that's basically Perfect. that amount, which is usually half an hour to one hour. But if you if you want to let it rest for like an hour, two hours, you can do that. You know, the, the, it's, it's, it's going to be fine. Um, so yeah, if, it's, if it kind of shrinks, just kind of um, just, just flatten, put, it, out flatten it out. Uh, all over so again. I want to assume now that these have rested yes. while the oven was kind of preheating, right? Yes. 
What are we going to do then? So we're going to put it on a, a sheet pan, right? Um, and then we're going to kind of uh, brush some milk on it, and then right. cover it with whatever seeds we'd like, uh, which we have. We have sesame seeds, we have fennel seeds, as well as nigella seeds, which are black seeds. Perfect. When we're back, you're going to see these plated up on that baking sheet that's going to go into the oven. Right. See you in a bit. So basically, you form these beautiful looking flatbreads, right? Yes. What you gonna do now? All right, so you're supposed to use a brush, <laughs> um, but no big deal. That's the whole theme here, isn't it? It is. So you're gonna just use a spoon and spoon some milk onto your bread. Mm -hmm. um, and you add the milk just to add just this gorgeous color. I don't know, bread, um, Milk just does something in the oven for baked goods, and it's just, it's a golden, it's a golden glory. <laughs> it gives you this, like, nice sheen. It does, it does. Or you could also use milk mixed with egg, or you can just use egg. So it's either eggs or milk that make, give it that beautiful, beautiful sheen in the oven. Um, so I'm going to do that for three of these um, flatbreads. Um, so like I said, if, it's, if it has shrunk in the oven, no big deal. We're just going to, you know, uh, flatten it a little bit more. Like I'm, I'm looking at was. them like they're already ready, and, uh, <laughs> but I mean, you have prepared one in advance. You yes. make three of these, each with a different topping. And speaking yes. of toppings, uh -huh. what are you going to do with those? So the toppings I have, well, when I actually first made this bread, I right. put on uh, sesame seeds as well as nigella seeds, as well as fennel seeds, and right. all of that together was absolutely gorgeous. But today we're trying it a little bit different. We're gonna just do one with sesame seeds, one with nigella seeds, and one with fennel seeds. Beautiful. And uh, they just add this delicious, 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 like crunch and flavor to the dough, especially the fennel seeds. They're so good on uh, the date. They just pair really well with dates, I think. They really do, because they, they are also slightly sweet. Mm -hmm. Right, so they add to that like caramel flavor that you get. Yes, I said flavor. I said flavor. <laughs> it's fine. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> I think this should be called Leo's No Big Deal Date yeah. Whole Wheat Flatbread. I'm for it. I'm uh, with that. I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> go for it. It's not trademarked yet. Right. Right. It's not. Okay. So that's sesame seed. That's sesame. And just immediately, it's these nuts are gonna like caramelize as well and kind of roast in the oven. Yes. Between the nuts and the herb and the it's spice. It's gonna be fantastic. And I love nigella seeds, by the way, also known as blessing seeds. Yes. They I didn't are, know they're called blessing seeds. They are. Nice. Well, they're really good for you as well. They really are, and the oil from them is quite pungent but pretty good too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. And we're good. So basically, let's we'll leave these here just right. for like reference sake. And I'm going to pull out the ones that we had already baked, right? Right. And they smell so good. They really do. I mean, I'm marketing my own product, but they smell really good. Well, I'm marketing <laughs> your product because it's, it's delicious. <laughs> right. Okay. So here we go. I mean, oh my God, the smell. And they, they have a nice weight to them. They right. They have a beautiful color to them. They're very hearty. Like, this is this is a bread you eat. You're like, you might just have half of it and you'll be full. You'll feel nourished. You'll feel like accomplished even. <laughs> you also feel very accomplished when it's going through you because it's a lot of fiber. It is a lot of fiber. Let's get there. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, TMI, ladies and gentlemen, is my specialty. I mean, it looks beautiful. How would you plate this now? All right. So do we have our dippage? We do have our dippage. <laughs> I mean, let me just... Right. I mean, I mean yeah, go I, for can that. Can I do this? Perfect. I mean, look at that. It's just I do like some presentation, you guys. I mean, come on, that it's looks just, so good. It's beautiful. And it just really like is. I'm touching them, they smell. Really, I don't like using this word, but they do smell divine. Divine. They really do. That's really that's do. how I would res describe it myself. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna prepare the bowl of the dippage. Dippage. Right. Which is a quick Yemeni lentil breakfast dish, mm -hmm. right? I think it pairs really well with this. Right. When we're back, you guys, you gotta try this bread and make it for all your family members and everybody you love because this is a mom like specialty absolutely and also now known as Leo's no big deal no big deal no big deal date whole wheat flatbread yes that absolutely. About right? <laughs> see you in a bit so you've shared with us today your no big deal no big deal date molasses and whole wheat flatbread one with some black seeds, one with fennel, and one with some sesame seeds. Right. It looks phenomenal. It smells phenomenal too. I know, right? And I can't <laughs> wait to kind of dig into this. You know, Leo, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here with us. It's and my make pleasure. this delicious dish. You guys, you have to follow her on Lail Bakes. That's E-L-E-I-L -E Bakes. One word on Instagram. Yes. That's your handle. And by the way, it's going to be present at the bottom of the screen, so make sure to do that. 
And you know what? You got to make this one. I've said this for every single episode because <laughs> it's true. It's true. It is. It really is. It's simple. No. And if you if you want to make it even more simple, if you don't like dates, you don't want to add dates, you don't want it to be sweet, don't. just don't add the dates. Don't add the date molasses. No big deal. No big deal. I think that's the catchphrase for this episode. Right. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much for staying tuned and seeing this recipe all the way through. Remember, have a blessed Ramadan. Stay safe, stay blessed, and stay grateful. See you next episode. Thank you. Thank you.